Clap on. Clap off. The clap clapper. Clapper. You have to finish it. It's like a fart. I mean, you're holding it unless you yeah, say you it. Yeah, you can't let that hang. Uh, That's so not going to happen. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. This is Lore Forge, the podcast for Ashes of Creation. This is episode nine, and we are your hosts. I am Jibs, and I'm joined by Cash. Hey, everybody. Hope you're having a great week. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, like a rubber band. It goes, here we go. <laughs> and Sonny's here this week. I feel like if I don't start it by saying, hey, yeah, I'm Sonny, that I'm going to be left out of the group next time or something. <laughs> Peace, love, and honey bee. <laughs> That's right. How are you guys doing? Oh, I'm good, buddy. How are you? I am well. Um, I... Uh, I did some work on the owl. You can see it behind me, the the painting that is always in my screen. And man, it is just like, it's it might extend long enough to get to Alpha 2, where I'm still putting little pieces on it. And that could be like a year from now. So we're going to see whether or not, we, maybe we should take bets on the over under painting will be done by Alpha 2. Mm. The owl Alpha 2 coming soon soon to yeah i don't know i don't know if soon trademark will qualify for alpha 2 it could be eventually <laughs> <laughs> when it's ready <laughs> yes it, it is pretty cool though and i think we were just talking about it but in the in our five minute opinion videos you can see the progression of the owl behind you and like i always put that logo on right on top of the owl and then when it fades out it fades out into your into your creation, your paint by numbers. I love it. Is this, is this is true. <laughs> My paint by numbers. Uh, well, uh, awesome. JB had a had a huge hand in designing the the logo of the owl, and this is sort of my artistic uh, representation of it. But um, yeah, it's super cool to see that. That's just one of the the magic of of your editing uh, is to be able to see that progression, and it, and it really lets you know just like how long I've been taking with this particular painting. <laughs> Like, because some of these videos won't come out for months, you know, and uh, and then all of a sudden you see it. And, and it's also really weird if one of them comes out out of order. And mm, you're yeah. like, wait a minute. Did he erase something on the owl? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Every time I look at it, I think I got to get back to my wood burning because it, it's therapeutic, man. It's nice. You, you can't were always a celebrity. Be... You were a, a celebrity on the Ashes Twitter with your wood burning. Yeah, you were. That was that was pretty cool. And actually, a, a little fun fact. I know we'd seem like we're talking about New World a lot, but New World still has that wood burning that yeah. I did in the background of their <laughs> yeah. of their dev videos. It's like right in the background, this little crossed axis that says New World. Yeah, I did that. Still <laughs> there. Cool. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. We call that in the podcasting world limited fame. <laughs> That's right. Extremely <laughs> limited. Limited fame. <laughs> limited fame. <laughs> Oh, boy. So what have you guys been up to this week? What, what have you been doing in gaming? So I have been playing a lot of Starfield. Uh, Starfield has been a lot of fun. I've found uh, that I've tried to get into smuggling more. See, the problem with Starfield is this. Like, this is this is 15 seconds on Starfield. I got pirates on one side, and I got the military on the other. And they don't get along with each other, but I kind of want to play both sides. And so I'm finding that I don't want to take, like, 60% of the quests in the game because it's going to make one side angry, and I just have failure to make a decision on what I should actually do. See? So that that's my frustration right now in Starfield is that it's it's totally a me problem that I just can't pick a side is is my biggest thing. So you're living like the whole Han Solo lifestyle then, huh? Yes. Yes. This is exactly what I want. Now, okay, this one's a blast from the past for you guys. I don't know how big into like sim games way back in the day you were, but there was a game called Privateer and it came oh. out way, way back in the day, like in the 90s. And man, was that the best game ever ever because you could do it all you were just han solo and that was your thing is you were a privateer pick up you know a bounty here pick up a military thing here smuggle something you know just kind of do your thing uh and and that game was the best there was a uh, a spiritual successor to that game that came out a little while ago and i cannot remember the name of it i'll have to look it up but but it was a it was a really good one, but Privateer, man, that was a super important part of my gaming childhood. 
I remember that. I remember it just, I remember the box art. It was like a tan box art and it had a swooping P for Privateer. And didn't it have a pirate ship on it? Uh, I don't know. That's a great question. I don't think I ever saw the box art for any of those games. Oh man, that was like my oh. 90s experience or growing up. Like, Rebel Galaxy. Rebel Galaxy. Rebel Sorry Galaxy. to interrupt you. Rebel no, Galaxy no, no. was the was the game I was thinking of. Go ahead, Jake. Gotcha, gotcha. No, 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 no. You're fine. I was just randomly. Uh, I remember that. That's still some of my fondest memories as a kid, being a, a gamer as a young man, little bit, little boy. Was the uh, all the twenty dollar or less games that you'd find at Walmart that were PC games. Those were some of the best ones. <laughs> yeah, back when you could actually find boxed PC games at at a brick and mortar store. Mm. That is true. Everything's digital mm-hmm. nowadays. Yep. That's how I found Warcraft was literally a box in Best Buy. Um, I was wandering through Best Buy and I found World of Warcraft and it was in a box and it said that you could play it on a Mac. And you think about that now and it's just so foreign to think about like wandering through a place and looking at box art and lo- and picking up games. But it, that was the way that they sold games, man. You yeah. you would look at a box and the box would look cool and you'd buy the game. It, you right. didn't have any idea what kind of game, like what the, what the insides were actually gonna do except for the pictures that were on the box. Yeah. Remember when the boxes were like, this big they were huge yeah they were enormous yep and then they shrunk down because obviously the you know they went from from large floppy to smaller floppy to compact disc yeah you guys remember the yeah, starcraft 2 empty. you remember the starcraft 2 the big box it was like a it was like they all they sold it for years i don't know, maybe just an indiana thing but the yep. starcraft 2 like trilogy of something i don't know what it even was but it was always such a big big box randomly yes there was three games in that. That was like, and it was just a big empty box. <laughs> it was enormous. <laughs> there must have been some sort of psychology with that, right? Because I know exactly what you're talking about with the StarCraft games. It was all three of them. Yeah. And it was just a giant box. Yeah, man, good times. Well, here's the hoping for a nice, big, physical collector's edition for Ashes of Creation. Oh, I'll Please. pay. A thousand percent I'll pay for that. I hope that they do that. You know, I don't know. I think that's something, one of the many things I'm ignorant on of, of what Steven has discussed, because I'm sure he's probably answered that. But man, there's just something about when a game launches and you have a good just memory there sitting on your shelf or, or you know, somewhere in your home on a on decorative piece. I don't know. But just of like, hey, I have that statue that is from XYZ or I have that steel book plus the map or whatever else, you know, that'd be cool. JB, I'm, I'm looking it up. Hmm. JB, what is the last collector's edition thing, physical thing that you got from a game? Oh, does it count as a gift? Sure. Cash gifted me the Morrowind physical collectors back when we were doing the ESO show, the uh, Lore Seeker show, and I still have I still have everything. Uh, to this day. But truthfully, you know what's the most prized possession out of that entire thing? It's none of that. It's his he did a full wood burning of Skyrim, and I have it kept safe in a, a nice little storage area so nothing happens to it. But yeah. Oh, the Skyrim map? Yeah, that's my favorite thing. It's one Yeah. It that's my favorite, dude. I love it. Oh man. Yeah. So back, back to the full circle to the wood burning. Back to the wood burning. <laughs> anyway. Yep. Cash, what you doing gaming? In gaming? There wasn't a whole lot of gaming this week. There was a lot of video creation. There was a whole lot of cash real life online. Um, work has been nuts this last week. Just seems like every single day there's like something else for one of the works going on. Uh, mm-hmm. But when I did have game time, I was uh, I was playing New World. And I think like last night we jumped in and we were playing New World. And it was uh, is a good reminder that the game can be insanely unforgiving if you are not prepared so it was fun fun though i like that kind of challenging content yeah i like that too because i feel like in a lot of ways that game can be a good precursor to like the risk versus reward mentality of ashes now obviously ashes is going to be on a different level on basically everything but it's kind of like just a good primer just to get in and get used to gathering, being able to gather pretty much everything in front of you, you know, just diving in on professions and fishing and whatnot. So 
you know, having to earn it. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I did this week was it was a whole lot of video, a whole lot of learning and studying video and a whole lot of new world. <laughs> so yep. that was about it. That was about it. Well, it's funny we mentioned new world because we're about to disparage one of its features. <laughs> <laughs> we will get to that eventually, but I have a surprise for you guys before that. Oh, um, well, hang on. Hang on. Before we do that, before we do that, we have, okay. a show, we have a show note. So quick note to everyone who's listening right now. We are recording the a few days before the dev update for the world events. So that will actually be covered on our very first live episode, Loreforged Live, next week for or this coming week up blah, blah. no not upcoming week what would it be a couple days from now anyway release day october 4th is when we're going to be doing it live so make sure you come enjoy the stream 8 p.m est twitch.tv slash loreforged hq sunny you know as you say that it's really hard to say like in the coming week or after the weekend when you record shows and release them <laughs> like at later points and you don't know when people are listening to it like it's a you just are dropped in a weird point in space time and you can you reference are a, anything. you are a professional get the timelines correct <laughs> <laughs> oh exactly okay here we go with kotor check out that thing on reddit uh, I have uh, some time and I like to per peruse Reddit every now and then looking for things. And Ashes of Creation is starting to build an interesting little Reddit community. Now, most of them are just angsty and worried about everything falling apart, which is kind of the role of Reddit uh, in the pre-launch phase. Once the game actually launches, you know, many, many, many moons from now, they might uh, have more creative things. But right now it's, it's usually just a bunch of fear. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of an interesting thing, but sometimes there are little gems in there. And I think that I found one today and it brings up a really interesting conversation point. So this is from a guy called Ied, I-Y-I-E-D. I have no idea. People with their usernames, right? And he says, picture this, you log into Ashes of Creation and you're greeted with the sound of trumpets, other skillfully played instruments, seeing as you logged on, pardon me, as you had logged off in the town square out of the node you reside in. There's a festival going on in the weekend. You look around, see many festivities taking place. Dwarf races, all-you-can-eat buffets at the local tavern, people wearing seasonal armor, a raid getting ready to head out into the mountain range to fight the dragon that's taken hold of the mountain summit during the event. You also notice that you received a letter from one of your friends who just messaged you asking if you were going to be around this weekend. Everything was right in the world of Vera. And then you woke up. Uh, and so he goes on, and that little primer is actually to make you think of ambient sound and atmosphere. Mm. So he asked a roundabout way of asking this, which I thought, this is a really good question, because I think that there are two different types of gamers. Are you a music volume up, enjoy the the cinematic music that comes with a game or are you a music volume down living in the ambience of whatever they have created for the area type of gamer that's a good question it is i'm i'm both i am both and and a lot of it is very dependent i always go back and forth to my options to change all of those things depending on what i'm doing um and to explain that a little bit, if I'm in Discord with a bunch of friends, our friends are very chatty. They like to chat. So I have to take all that stuff and just use the sliders and turn it all down to about 30 or 25 percent. But there are times where cutscenes will pop in and I will literally like mute or or leave the chat channel so that I can listen to that stuff. But if I'm gaming by myself, which I'll do. Sometimes I'll just pop into a game and not go into Discord and I'll just kind of zone out and, and enjoy all of that stuff. I turn it all up. All of it. Music, the ambience especially, um, because I, I like to hear all that stuff and really, really get engrossed in it. But at the same point, like, I would say probably 75% I'm in a Discord channel because I'm, I'm very social. <laughs> JB? I think... Uh... 
I'm like Cash. I'm, I'm both. When it comes to gaming, I like to... There's oftentimes, more so than not... I'll say this. Let me say this. More times than not, the music is way down and the ambience is cranked. Uh, I didn't used to be that way. Used to, it was everything maxed out, but now I keep the music very, very low, enough to just kind of have that bass line of ambient uh, tones, similar to kind of like people listen to the show. But I like to have that ambient cranked all the way up because I want to immerse myself as much as humanly possible at what's in front of me and then have the music kind of complement that instead of them, you know, fighting for all the attention and... Now, there's sometimes I just crank it all the way up and turn my fader up, and I'm like, yeah, let's go. Wow, new what? yeah. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> it's kind of all over the place. But, yeah, that's kind of how I do it. What about you? Oh, it, okay. So most of the time I'm music off, uh, like all the way off. And it is unfair uh, because I know that some of these games have got fantastic music, and they've spent a lot of time and effort in doing that. So in the first little while, I will keep the music on. But if I've played a game for any period of time, like if I'm used to it at all, then I will take the music completely out. And I will just go 100% pure ambient sound. Uh, There are games that we have played where the ambient sound is terrible. Uh, Mm -hmm. And SWOTOR was one of them. Mm -hmm. SWOTOR's ambient sound was the worst ever and i know this because when i made the university of coruscant i wanted to go into these places and use the ambient sound and it was terrible it was like unusable um and it was because they leaned so heavily into the star wars music and the like the big orchestra stuff that they just had going all the time and so the combination of the two made it pretty okay but when you pulled one out it was just oh you just felt like you weren't there at all. Mm. Like it would be dead spaces and you'd have, you'd go into a place that was supposed to, you know, be filled with sound. And it was like here and there, like bits coming in and bits coming out. And I was just like, what is going on here? So in cases like that, I will definitely use uh, music. I'm playing a game right now. This is funny. The golden feather, uh, the golden feather tavern podcast. Uh, I'd said that, I was playing this game called Traveler's Rest, which is a tavern building game. It's a fun little game where you run a tavern. And they were just all over that. (laughs) They love to hear that. And that game has got medieval music and all of that stuff. But the sound that they just have in the tavern is fantastic. And so I just like listening to the tavern sound of people, you know, filling up the tavern. And, uh, And if you can get anything even close to that in a game, then that's what I'll do. I'll just have the music off. But I think, thought this was a really interesting question. Yeah, I agree. Do you think that kind of going back to the whole tavern thing? Do you think that like that that's a communal experience for like for gamers everywhere? There are fans of MMOs everywhere. Something special about a tavern, or is that just us? Because it always seems seems to end up on all our stuff. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, Cash, but I I would be hard pressed to think of anybody that plays an RPG, a role playing game, and doesn't have some sort of affinity for a tavern. Like it's where everything starts and ends, right? Yeah, it it absolutely does. And I mean, it's that's been the theme of of our show for years now. It's just because we we love that stuff. And I'll be honest with you, it started with Sunny's Diner, like all those all those years back, Sunny, where your Swotor show was themed to be in a galactic diner, which was just super cool. And you had you had people busting a table in the background, <laughs> and, but it was <laughs> it was very appropriately uh, leveled, but. I have always loved to be whisked away to environments like that when we're either playing a game or talking about a game or, you know, we're doing one of our shows. But yeah, I mean, taverns really do seem to be the the center place, the centerpiece, the cornerstone for a lot of different games and adventures. And I mean, look at a, a typical D&D um campaign where do they start they all start in a tavern gathering your party before venturing forth i i just want to to make one note here and that i can't take credit for that beautiful ingenious idea of having it in a tavern that directly comes from tavern cast that was that was the thing that i pulled when i started my podcast was listening to tavern cast and they had it in a tavern i'm like ah. Oh, 
it's genius. It just makes everyone immediately more relaxed. Mm. Right. It's always, it's so fitting too. I mean, kind of like uh, everything, you know, you just said Sunny and, and Cash as well. It's, there's something about whether it's at the end of the day after adventuring. And I'm this way in MMOs. Oftentimes when I was playing Warcraft, I'd always end up in a tavern. Typically Goldshire, because I always played Alliance and I always loved the Goldshire tavern. Or the yeah, uh, ERP. <laughs> what happened on Moon Guard stays on Moon Guard. <laughs> Didn't involve me. But anyway, <laughs> the Emerald Dream. Yeah, that <laughs> was a dream for a lot of people, I guess. So there's that. Allegedly, it didn't involve you. <laughs> it did not. I was too scared to death trying to figure out why all these naked characters are in here standing around. Naked, all these half naked night elves. So, yep. <laughs> don't go in any of the rooms in that end. I'm just saying, especially in the basement. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh. Anyway, uh, for me, it's. I don't know what it is. It's just something about the tavern. I find peaceful. I find it so fitting for TTRPGs, for MMOs. It's like at the end of the day, you can go in there, meet friends, hang out. And with the fact with Ashes of Creation, it, you know, having those parlor games, just being able to go in there and just chill and know it's an actual thing there that you can do. It's just, oh my gosh, it's like perfect. How amazing would it be for Ashes to have different types of tavern music that played on a loop that you could enjoy when you went into you know different taverns in different biomes or uh, different racially uh, themed taverns and then at some point a release of said tavern music is put all onto one soundtrack oh i hope they do something like that the ruined king it brings me back to ruined king from Le league of oh. legends they have the yes the tavern ambiences, uh, just a whole track or soundtrack for that, and then a soundtrack for the game. Like, I that, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, Warcrafts, Warcrafts, uh, the taverns of Azeroth is like always on my playlist. It is phenomenal. Yeah, and that's what I want for Ashes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, they've they've done a lot of stuff with the uh, the racial stuff, like the caravans have got racial flares to them, you know, all the, the housing and things like that. It would be cool if they extended that to the actual ambient sound of the taverns. Sometimes in games, taverns are taverns, right? And you you have to you have to like pick and choose what you're going to put your energy in and what kind of bandwidth your game has. But if they were able to dial in like a Nakua tavern versus a, a you know, a Vec tavern or things like that, a, a Pyre tavern, do Pyre have taverns? You got to think they have taverns, right? Uh, they oh, yeah. could sound pretty wildly different. So that would be, uh, that would be interesting to be able to do that. Agreed. Agreed a thousand percent, man. Gosh, I can't wait. Ugh. Especially if it's like, so the ambience, like the dunes and killed dwarves that's inside of a mountain and having that ambience and whatever that feels like versus mm. tiki bar on the beach, waves rolling in, you know. Ugh. There has to be Nakua reggae. I, I swear, like, <laughs> Bear, awesome. if you're out there, I know you're not listening <laughs> to this podcast, but Bear, <laughs> this is my call to action. The Nakua need reggae How they need steel drum oh yeah ah. <laughs> oh yeah my gosh how cool would it be to have a band that's kind of the way that league of legends did it and i know i'm bringing them up but there's we discovered them behind the scenes before we even launched this show months ago when we realized oh my gosh they have all these soundtracks wait they have a metal band that is based from members uh, the members of the band are characters in league of legends what and you realize, like, oh, this is a real thing. They went full out with a full soundtrack with a band taken from Heroes of the Game. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I want that in Ashes. That'd be awesome. I think what we're starting right now is we're starting Ashes of Creations. We're starting Intrepid's Wall of Crazy for them. Oh, yeah. We're sorry. just going to start pinning stuff <laughs> on their wall. Like, hey, this would be cool. Need this would be board. cool. <laughs> That's all we need is the lore forged wall of crazy and like all the craziest ideas that we come up with, we put them on a list somewhere. Uh, that brings me back to Warcraft though. Warcraft had that band, uh, the the insane like horde band that played the, oh, the yeah. metal music. And, two? Yeah, and they would uh, they like show up to events. You know, you'd have the the band playing things, and it was a big deal. The that whole thing. What was the name of that Warcraft band? I forget the name of the band, but they were in. Uh, there were two different metal bands uh, that you could find at the Darkmoon Fair. 
and they would play on this rotating schedule. I think uh, one was the fantastic. Yeah, I think the one was the Thunderhoofs, maybe? I don't know. They were the ones that would always appear at the top of the hour, and then it seemed like at random times, every hour and a half, you'd get this, what was it, the, the Undead? Um, it was like in a cave, and I think it had an old quest chain tied to it. Yeah, there was an undead guy that was like just doing the the like heavy metal headbanging thing. The band I was thinking of is Elite Torin Chieftain. That's was, it. Uh, ah, <laughs> the there it is. Torin Chieftains. Yep. Elite Torin Chieftain. It was so good, and they were everywhere. Yeah. Um, they had a band like this in Guild Wars too. There was like there's a there's a plaque in the uh, mm -hmm. in the sort of sea piratey uh, town that I can't remember. Um, but there was a there was like a whole thing there, and you could click on the plaque, and it would play different, um, it would play different uh, different tunes that this guy had written, and I think he like might have been a real person who died, uh, and it was like an, an homage to him, almost a, a, like a gravesite or something like that. So that was pretty cool. I think for Ashes, what would be more appropriate would be to have some kind of a traveling minstrel band. That would be oh, more, yeah. it would be way more like time appropriate where you just got a bunch of bards and, and oh my gosh, there's another wall of crazy. You're welcome, Intrepid, where we're just going to, we're going to pin this one on there, a traveling minstrel band. Yes. <laughs> that just shows up at different metropoli. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They're in town. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a, the, the baker's dozen minstrels are in town. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, Everybody gets a buff. We all get free rolls. <laughs> yep. Anyway, that's Kotor. So that that has derailed us long enough, but I thought that was a good one. It, it really makes it think like music or ambience and then you start thinking about just all the crazy ambience that you could put inside a game like Ashes. So, JB, go oh, yeah. ahead and take us into the actual show. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. So, folks, being that this is right before a big big stream, which we can't wait to cover next week on the show, there's something we wanted to talk about. It was a roundtable discussion. And we often talk about this behind the scenes at Loreforged, particularly just when we're sitting in Discord, hanging out with friends, and we're just... We end up, at some point, it always comes back to underwater content in MMORPGs. And we thought, you know, why not bring that on the show and discuss it with the peoples and let hear what they think as well. So today what we're going to be talking about is what makes water content memorable and meaningful in an MMO and what can Intrepid Studios do to add value to this type of content. Fellas, we've seen all kinds of MMOs do it well, struggle. I mean, there's there's a lot of room in this department. Truthfully, there's a lot of great reference points in the past from previous MMOs. But there's a lot of room in this part, uh, in this section of content for MMOs. What do you guys think? I'll go ahead and start real quickly, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit it right out of the park with the first swing, and that's Guild Wars 2. Like I've oh. not played a game with underwater content, and I realize that this show is not specifically about underwater content. It's just kind of like about water in general. But as far as MMOs go, I've never played a game that spent more time developing an underwater mechanic type of situation than Guild Wars 2. You could, it was vertically huge, so deep, you could go all over the place. There were, the mechanics worked differently, your weapons worked differently, you got different weapons for it. It was just amazing. It was like, it was probably 40% of the game, and it was a 40% of the game that some people just didn't even do. Uh, and so that's, it's very strange to me, but man, Guild Wars 2. Uh, I am I have all sorts of other points to bring up, but I'm going to go ahead and send it to cash. But I wanted to start with that because to me, that was the best that any MMO has ever done it. And if, and if we could be even close to that, then I'll be super stoked. Oh man, you just tickled it. When you throw out Guild Wars 2, like right off the bat, and then like transition to me, that's just tickling a little bit. Because <laughs> I mean, that, that truly is the pinnacle of water content for for me and most likely us um guild wars you did they totally did nail it they had they when you were when you went underwater for for one your skill bar changed to underwater weapons immediately and that to me was just so freaking cool every character 
you had a, a slot on your on your paper doll where you were able to add a an underwater device now granted that game was a lot more steampunk than other fantasy games are going to be there was a lot more of that steampunk element in there where there was um you know like more modern inventions and stuff and it wasn't so hardcore medieval fantasy so i don't see that happening in ashes but i really did love that um the second one that i'm going to mention since we're talking the ones that we've liked so far for me is going to be world of warcraft um i don't think that like they didn't have any different mechanics or anything like that unless you were on a special quest or it was an actual like a special zone where guild wars 2 had it full time if you were underwater you had these additional elements to your gameplay but with world of warcraft the thing that i loved so much was was the scale alone in world of warcraft when you were underwater it really did make you feel like the the oceans were massive um they probably could have spread it out a little more where there were more discoverables, discoverables and stuff underwater. Um, you know, like underwater harvesting nodes and stuff like that could have been a little bit more underwater treasure. But there still was a really good element of exploration. And that is that was very, very important to me with underwater content. And just again, I just don't think any other game has done it any better, especially especially the underwater exploration. I mean, you could go underwater for minutes upon minutes upon minutes before you discovered like this new cave system where, and it leads to some amazing stuff or the game was so vertical that you would be, you know, up in the trees or up on some cliff somewhere and you're like, ooh, I'm gonna cliff dive this waterfall. That looks good. And you cliff dive this waterfall and you're in an entirely different biome at that point. And you're like, what? And there's freaking frog NPCs and stuff like all over the place. And you're like, what in the hell just happened? Like, this game is insane. So for water content, like, absolutely a thousand percent. My number one is Guild Wars 2 and my number two is going to be World of Warcraft. Mm, dang. I don't really feel like I can top that. Or I mean, that, that was pretty spot on. I mean, for, from a best that I've experienced, I wish I could say I remember Arc Age because I know that that is something that Intrepid is pulling on a lot uh, from even reference points we talk about it for the game. You know, so I do remember there being shipbuilding, and at the time I was too young to really invest myself properly in that MMO when it launched, and I just remember that that was definitely a thing and, you know, being able to be out in the ocean. And But from what I have experienced since then, definitely Guild Wars 2 is is the pinnacle. The, the level of exploration and true unknown was felt in that game i know that oftentimes that was a reoccurring theme for us when we were playing guild wars 2 was just discovery and the fact that they did something like that in the in the um underwater space was amazing and i loved how again you know you're talking about abilities changing and and that was absolutely immersive i loved that i loved that and i always thought it was so cool Especially when you're trying to figure out what this... I don't think it's like anyone else, but trying to figure out what the spear gun does and when I need to use it and when I shouldn't use it. Am I just spamming all the buttons? Yes, that was me. You know, just trying to not yeah. die. You know, so like it that was, was... me. That was me too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was so common. So it's just very, very... It was amazing. It felt like there was a whole game within a game in Guild Wars 2. And a, if there was ever a reason to go play it simply just for the underwater content, you go check that out because that was awesome. It's research. It is research. Everything leading up to Ashes is research. Research. Us playing New World, us playing, well, I mean, we were playing Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, I mean, all of it, really. I think that there are some games that I wish I could have seen more from in the past, and I honestly think it probably was a engine issue. I know that SWOTOR and ESO, both games that were very dear to us, that both ran off the same engine, the hero engine. And truthfully, in both of those, they both had pretty much the same style of underwater. You would, you would, the, I believe, unless I'm forgetting something, you'd basically just be able to run through the water, and that was it. Now, there were some amazing locales in those games, amazing, but I just couldn't immerse myself like I wanted to in that regard. You could swim on top of the water in ESO. That's right. 
That's just right. not under it. Swotor, you could wade your ankles through the water because that's the <laughs> deepest water in all of the galaxy. <laughs> Apparently, it was only ankle deep, which we know is BS because of because of uh, our beloved Jar Jar episode of the movies. Um, they were obviously underwater when they went to the home of the Gungans. So, yeah, we know it's a thing in Star Wars. And uh, apparently, uh, Bioware, uh, I don't know, I have some pretty choice words I could say about <laughs> about how they develop the water content because it was a big freaking deal to me when it came out. It is such a huge thing in exploration. And that game, I was already upset with it because it was on rails anyway. Well, you are you're eliminating an entire biome in a game by not allowing there to be some type of underwater content. And it, it just became a joke, like running through the water and getting your ankles wet just became a freaking joke in Sword Tour. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Camino, Camino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. You know, that was an yeah. expansion, I think. I honestly don't know if they ever actually let you go in the water in that. But yeah, that was a thing. But you know what happens. I mean, it's it, it, it's right. there's an there's an entire life cycle that happens on Camino, and even you know even underwater in Naboo, where where Dum Dum Jar Jar lives. You know, <laughs> yes, I'm not a fan of Jar Jar. In case you uh, really, go on. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Wait, there's more. So no, yeah. that's a whole other Oprah show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that could be a state of the L. Oh goodness. So, speaking in regards to Ashes of Creation, whenever you guys think of memorable water content, what makes, I guess in that same sentence, so what to you makes water content memorable? Like, what stands out? I think you should go first. I honestly do. Because Sonny and I are going to crush this thing, and I want to hear your thoughts on this first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you said <spend> some angst. <laughs> It's the pleading that's coming from us to Intrepid. I think for me, whenever I look at Intrepid with Ashes of Creation and kind of consider what water content really stands out as memorable to me, it's when you take the entire world that has, and I'm going to audio, heads up, going to audio. When you take the entire world that has a feel, so it could be the Riverlands. I'm sitting there, I'm watching my cape majestically waft in the wind, there's some great ambience going on. That cloak so is wrapping. Majestic. Oh, it's so majestic. <laughs> you know, just all the things, right? When I go underwater, I want to hear that transition. You know how it sounds. <laughs> you know, like everything just kind of changes. Your The way you hear things changes. That to how, me. How is it again? <laughs> so, you know. Cool. Got, got yeah. it in one. <laughs> two for two. So, you know, I... uh for me, it, that's kind of where I really want to see it knocked out of the park. Something that's memorable is change my entire normal experience in the game to make it something that's completely different but adds to it and is immersive at the same time. And I think you find that in sound. How about splashing water on the screen? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who doesn't love the little water droplets, right? Yeah, a little, a little cinematic water droplets. Oh, there's water on my screen. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gosh, that's always a win. All right, Cash. The ball is on the tee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't you bring golf into this. <laughs> then I'm really going to get mad. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, I, I have I have a few here, and I don't mean to, you know, steal any from anybody else, but um, there, there are quite a few things that I think, number one, I love that I've seen in other games and number two that I hope Intrepid would consider adding into swimming and underwater content. So the first one for me is just very simple, low hanging fruit, but swimming animations, something night, which I know they already have and they're improving upon something very fluid, something that actually looks like you're swimming. Maybe your character can even change from like an overhand stroke to a side stroke or like when he maybe gets underwater and the animation changes to like more of a full body like frog movement you know where you're you're cyclically moving your your legs in a frog motion <laughs> um that that animation so animations i think is is very very important the second one i kind of hit on when i was talking about uh world of warcrafts and guild wars is that underwater exploration 
you want to be able to feel that your sense of scale when you are underwater is massive. And when you look at the ratio of the water area to actual like geographic ground area in the map of Vera, it is a majority of water. So that is, you will be losing so much of your potential for content if you don't have water and underwater content be part of what you're building. Um, along with that comes things like underwater discoverables, treasures that you can find, uh, things that you can, things that are only available to be harvested in the water. And that's not including fish because fishing is a whole other thing. And I know that Intrepid is paying very, very special attention to different species of spit of fish and such so that we can fish them up. But to be able to see those different species of fish when you're underwater, perhaps maybe um, like clamshells or, you know, like treasure containers or something like that that can be found underwater, I think would, would be a really, really cool thing. Like underwater cave systems would be just amazing. Combat would be really cool underwater. I don't know if that's going to be a thing in Ashes, but underwater com combat, I think, is it's a very real thing. Like if you get into a struggling match or you get into a match with something under the water, like a, an alligator or something like that, you're going to have to fend it off. A shark? Boop, pop it on the nose. Something. There's got to be some kind of content <laughs> going on with, with combat. Um, an another thing is... What if they were to take swimming and make it like a buildable skill? So the more you spend in the water, the faster you get. They don't have these don't have to be like incredibly, you know, super fast or big giant chunk increments, but maybe you get 15 or 20% increased swimming speed over time as you accrue experience in the water. Right? Oh, man. A little swimming progression tree? Yes. What about, this kind of brings us to to racial abilities, but wouldn't you think the Nakua being an, an aquatic race by the sea, spending a lot of time by the ocean, wouldn't you think that they should probably swim a little faster or maybe have a little bit better lung capacity? So, because you know they're free diving, right? So I don't know. Maybe it's Walla crazy. Maybe I'm the crazy one, you guys. But I'm just throwing these little things out there because you never know who grabbed onto one of them. <laughs> Didn't Warcraft, <laughs> it weren't if you were like a night elf, you swam differently? Didn't you swim differently than the other races? They, just with the animations? I think the animations definitely were different. There was no advantage. No. At, there's no racial advantage to that. Un unless you're a druid. If you're a druid, obviously, and you switch into your aquatic form, then you, you oh, swim right. faster than everybody else. But um, no, nothing else racial that I knew of from that. I'm just thinking, like, in my mind of, like, the Nakua, like, free diving and going deep with this fluid motion, and then a Dunes and Kill Dwarf just, like, being thrown in like a boulder. <laughs> just, <laughs> just trying <laughs> desperately to, to stay above the water. <laughs> yeah, they get, they they innately, the Dunes and Kill, or the uh, Dunir will innately get um, wine barrels. <laughs> when they touch water, they end up in a wine barrel somehow. <laughs> just bobbing along in a barrel because they can't yeah. swim. I don't <laughs> swim. <laughs> Oh, so that's there you go. That's a wall of crazy. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dudes and kill in a wine barrel. Oh, man. <laughs> there would be some inter dwarf uh, heckling going on there for sure. Um, I agree with what you're saying. I, I think that that underwater feel and a lot of what JB was saying, too, with sound design, it's it's so important. I think that before I even get into my point, I want the water to feel oppressive and dangerous because that's where I think it has the most benefit that once you once you bloop into the water that you are you can't live down there like you're breathing and if there's enemies that are going to try to drag you further in or make it that gives me anxiety 
you know, that gives me one of those things like, I got to get out of the water, I got to get out of the water, <laughs> like I'm running out of breath. And the sound, you know, that oppressive sound with the no treble type of situation makes it even more, you know, maybe your screen starts to black in or things like that. Uh, you are definitely from the Midwest. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about is not under the water. I want to talk about above the water um, because I grew up sailing and I have an intense love for games that have top of the water mechanics, especially with boats and sails and stuff. And I'm not talking about that like online regatta game that I <laughs> that I played uh, <laughs> that one time and oh. showed you guys. A little oh, sailboat I racing game. Yeah, it's like probably about 16 pixels. <laughs> yeah, it looked like, looked like Minecraft sailing. But it was great. Uh, it, was, uh, it was awesome. And um, the more in-depth you can have that with your, with your boats, here's a wall of crazy idea, wind direction while you're on the water. If there was wind direction and you were sailing and you had to, like, you couldn't go directly into the wind, you had to go, you know, cross the wind like you normally would in a sailboat none of these boats are gonna have motors right this that's not the timeline that we are engaging in and so if you had to actually sail your boat like a sailboat to get somewhere that would be amazing and then you get different better boats you could build better faster sailboats things like that you could even end up in like pvp type of combat i know that that we're going to get into a whole different show when it comes to naval combat and we really don't know much of anything about that maybe that's exactly what they're going with but that would be super cool and the other top of water thing for me is fishing we cannot not talk about fishing fishing in mmos is weirdly one of the most beloved things in all of mmos and always has been and I don't have any good explanation for it, but I know very, very few gamers that don't love fishing in MMOs. And they will have strong opinions on which games had better fishing. And, and if a new game comes along and it has good fishing, New World had great fishing, right? New World had really cool fishing mechanics and people are legit stoked about it. Yeah, <laughs> it well, is oh, crazy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I hope you don't drop your damn fishing pole in the water in New World. <laughs> there's going to be a problem because okay we'll just cover it real quick and we get back to fishing in new world if you haven't played it when you're in the water and it goes over your head <laughs> it makes it appear like you have freaking pockets full of rocks because that's all you're doing <laughs> is walking on the bottom of the water it doesn't matter if you have heavy armor light armor medium armor you are walking underwater and if you can't get to the other side where your little head pops up above the level of the water you you're gonna die you're gonna die it's yeah. the most terrible system of water for having some of the most beautiful water in the in in gaming period it is the most terrible water system that's it rant off i'm making it short 30 seconds sunny back to fishing go isn't that crazy <laughs> like you're like one of those like 1800s divers with a iron suit on i mean it just is so nuts to me that you could have a game that that did such a good job with fishing and such a terrible job with everything else to do with the water and you're right like i've died uh in the water and you're like right near the shore <laughs> you're just like go <laughs> come on you're so close oh man it's like, like off a potion <laughs> oh just yeah you're, you're like eating eating bread <laughs> as you're trying to get to the shoreline yeah. uh, it's terrible it's just it it's categorically the worst it's <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's got to oh. be an expansion they have to fix that in some kind of an expansion at some time in the future because it is absolutely the worst horrendous water content out there <laughs> i think the only way they get past that is if they put that on april fools and it actually oh is a real goodness. thing you don't oh put that goodness. as an expansion. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't even imagine. Like the the opinions that we have on New World's water system are just oh like my gosh. intense, intense well, feelings going on there. Agreed. The, okay, so the one of the last things with, with fishing is that the fishing, weirdly enough, doesn't even have to be good. Look at Warcraft's fishing, right? Uh, it, the fishing itself was terrible. You cast in, fish would hit it, you'd click on it, you got the fish, right? That was it 
There was nothing else to it. But they made it cool by getting different fish in different places. They had fishing contests. They had different poles and stuff that would let you get better fishing. They used the fish in different important things. So like it's 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 not hard to please us with this kind of thing. And there's a million ways to do it. You just have to put a little bit of effort into it and we are gonna be very, very happy. And honest to God, as far as bang for your buck goes, like if you spend a little time and make a cool fishing mini game out of it, MMO players are gonna love you to death because one of the things that we do in MMOs, and I know not everybody plays like this and you may call us filthy casuals, but like sometimes I just like to go into a place and go somewhere that no one else is and just fish and chill out and forget my real job and forget what I'm doing in my real life. And I just want to do it. Music down, ambience up, fishing. That's it. And 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 it's it's just like that in every game, you know, and so. If you can make the water look pretty, Unreal Engine 5, this is not gonna be hard, right? You can make the water look pretty. It's gonna look gorgeous. It's gonna have like reflections on it. It's gonna have all sorts of cool stuff. Nakua beach sounds. Man, if I could sit on the end of a pier and just fish and listen to the sounds of the ocean, that would be amazing. <laughs> Do you imagine going for a swim and you have that underwater ambience and then you surface on the beach? This I'm setting the scene here, everybody. Like, just, just close your eyes. Let me do it. Just go with it. You come out of the water and you're walking on this white sand beach in this in this Nakua node, right? And it goes from that water ambient sound in your ears where you really can't hear anything and it just and then you hear steel drums. And you're like, oh, there's a tavern right there. This is a perfect place for me to dry off. And you just walk up the beach and there's Nakuans in there just doing their thing. Welcome to my village. <laughs> Selling a blackened grouper right off the stick to you. Uh, yeah. Or you sell what you just what you just spearfished. Oh, <gasps> spearfishing! Walla crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we move into kind of the final wrap up of today, Sonny, there was a quick note I wanted to let you know, and I know we're not going to dive into naval too much, but I just wanted to say this. Winds will influence the speed and direction that ships travel on the yes. open sea in Ashes of Creation. Per, I love it. Lex and the team over at the wiki. Thanks, Lex. <laughs> <laughs> Steven said it on the way to the bathroom in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> <on the> wiki. <laughs> oh, man, it was a 3 a.m. on an extra life stream. I caught him passing while I was dipping his nachos no. and cheese. <laughs> he's on it. He's on his way to the potty in the in the office. And you just you just hear in the background. He's like. By the way, add win. <laughs> oh man, that's and, so good. And you see Lex's face just pop around the corner. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, fellas. So, elevator pitch time. You're in an elevator pitch with Stephen Sharif. Sorry, Stephen. Your name just came up, so I'm gonna use it. What can Intrepid do to make water content memorable and meaningful in Ashes of Creation? And Sunny drew, want to go first? Sunny oh, okay. drew the short straw. Like, so go ahead, I Sunny. feel like all three of us ran into the door frame at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! Just, oh. <laughs> oh, my nose. Oh. This, this, this okay. does happen in podcasting sometimes, especially with three people. <laughs> uh, I'm going to well, say, say it's fishing. It's going to be fishing for me. Fishing, uh, I want you to spend some time. I want you to get fishing to be something really fun. I want you to be, I want you to be able to take the 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 creative ways to become a better fisher person and i want there i want to be able to fish different ways in different places who knows maybe you could like fly fish in certain places and like bobber fish and and you know different lures and things like that but spend some time this is an mmo for god's sakes people love fishing so spend some time on the fishing and if you can make that an awesome thing and then translate that fishing the products into craftable things then uh then i would be a super stoked dude i'd fish all day mm, yeah that's good setting the scene setting the scene okay oh we're doing this again yeah the scene. <laughs> okay the elevator door is open steven walks it it's by himself <laughs> nobody else is around him. not even a secretary nobody nobody it's just it's is just lex me. around taking notes <laughs> or you just I'll happen to be there lex. i'll send the notes to lex okay <laughs> 
Elevator door is open. The glorious Stephen Sharif walks in. Elevator door is closed. If you picture Tommy Boy, where they're like, <laughs> <"He's> yeah, that's <laughs> exactly so what I I'm turn around and I go, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Stephen. <laughs> My name is Cash. I have some notes for you about water content and ashes of creation. I know that you're already well on the way, but I just want you to know, these are the things that I think can be really, 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 really make it great, okay? Underwater exploration, really good animations. I want to hear ambient sounds when I'm underwater. I want to be able to have combat when I'm underwater. And then I want there to be like a whole lot of scale. I want it to seem really, really big. And then when I get out of the water, I want those little particles to be on the screen. Can you do all of that? <laughs> And Steven's going to look at me. He's going to tilt his head. He's going to be like, I got you, boo. <laughs> I got you. And then the doors open and Steven walks out and then they close. And then I faint. And then so Steven that, goes to the secretary and says, can we get like security. elevator security? <laughs> <laughs> call security. Because oh. there is a freaking weirdo <laughs> in the elevator. <laughs> And why did nobody get him out before I got in there? <laughs> oh, I'm taking the stairs from now on. Oh my God. How so, did you even get in there? Sounds like the elevator pitch. And my head instantly went to Tommy Boy when he's sitting there with the car. And he's going, wee -oo, wee -oo. <laughs> And the police pulls up and it's a ball of fire. Oh, my it's God. Like, oh, <laughs> New guys in the back puking his guts out. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, are five years oh, old. Oh, man, that's so good. <laughs> oh, for me, it's real simple. Anything that's awesome and underwater and immersive, I'm all in, man. Just have fun with it. Make it awesome and make a, make a, make every other MMO take count whenever they think of what they need to bring in their MMO because of what you put in yours. And that's it. <laughs> Just make it great. That's it, man. That seems yeah. easy enough. Just be the best there ever was. Just, <laughs> yep. Make Don't water content great again. Please. <laughs> oh, goodness, fellas. Well, this was fun. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, well, everyone, thank you so, so much for tuning into the episode here. This was Lore Forged episode nine. And don't forget, next week, Lore Forge Live begins. We're pushing the live. button, and the button never shuts off. <laughs> so it's October 4th, 8 p.m. EST, twitch.tv slash HQ. Tell a friend, tell your family, tell your dad. Your dad wants to see it. He doesn't know it yet. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or your mom, whoever, whoever, grandma. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Do you have in. a pen pal? Do you have a pen pal you can yeah. send it to? <laughs> Oh, that's old school. Oh, yeah, it is. Man, that was awesome. In elementary school, fifth grade, <laughs> writing a letter. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. If you love this show, we want to hear from you. Tell us how we're doing, how we can improve. You love us, you hate us. Whatever you feel, let us know. Every review that you give tells other gamers just like you whether or not this show is for them, and we sure do appreciate it. Sonny? You can check out all the links to all of the stuff that we do at loreforge.com, which includes... YouTube, go check out our enormous YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at loreforged. You can also find us at Twitch. And again, like JB said, now we'll be doing our shows live on Twitch. That's at twitch.tv slash loreforgedhq. And finally, Patreon. If you'd like to join our Patreon, that would be awesome because you get all of our stuff early plus the State of the Owl, which is our special sort of behind the scenes, let it all loose type of extra podcast cash. Don't forget, you can call us, get a hold of us, leave us some funny stuff. About a minute or less, we want to give us a call and we just might use it on the show. We most likely will. So call us. <laughs> 516-875-1776. Like I said, try and keep it about a minute or less. You can email us at loreforgedhq at gmail.com. If you are on the X, you can catch Jibs at Jibs IRL, myself at Cash Quests, and Sonny at U of Cora. Why do I always jack it I up? I don't know. It's like you, you, uh, is Star Wars new to you? Do you, oh. are you, are you <laughs> big on that? <laughs> you can get Sonny at U of Coruscant. <laughs> <laughs> it's U of Coruscant. Good job, Cash. 
Way to derail the show right at the end. Anyway, friends, <laughs> most importantly, don't forget to follow the show on X at Loreforged HQ. Now, extra lifers and non extra lifers. Hey, put it this way if you like kids <laughs> and like to help the ones that are struggling with uh, sickness and injury, you can join us on game day for Extra Life November 4th. We're going to be doing something very, 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 very fun and special. And you can show up if you want to watch us completely beside ourselves and probably screwing things up over and over and over again. So I don't know. Is that another? That's another hint. Two weeks in a row. Two hints. <gasps> Gather your party before venturing forth. Da, da, da. And See you in the tavern. Maybe next week we're going to release exactly what we're doing. We How's that? Want to give me a week to simmer? <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it on the live show. On, on the live show on Twitch. There we yeah. go. There we go. Friends, thank you so much for tuning in. We love you. Thanks for pushing and play. Have a great week in gaming. Take care. Peace, love, and honeybees. Safe travels, adventurers. <laughs>